Jesse Jordan wants to know, are you ever going to build a plane that could carry a person? Hmm. Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Josh. Hi. Now here at Flight Test, we have always thrived off the feedback from you guys, our community. It's the only thing that's kept us in business for the past five years. Yeah, so we thank you for it. Now recently, we put out a request for you guys to ask some questions that you would like for us to answer here today. And you flooded us with a ton of questions and we thank you for it. Now we're not gonna be able to hit all of them, but we are gonna do a podcast and go through the rest of them. So here's some questions about Flight Fest. Mm -hmm. Noah Nuzianium. Noah asked if uh, David was gonna be at Flight Fest, if he's gonna build anything there. Uh, Sherman Hartman wants to know uh, if there's going to be any kind of new obstacle courses or any new attractions at Flight Fest. And then John Schaefer wants to know if there's going to be times and places where they can get technical help, like with electronics and stuff like that. This is pretty cool. It's going to be pretty much a yes on all three. David, this is going to be the first year he's going to be at Flight Fest. Yes! So miss that sweet like crazy. Yeah, for real. And we're definitely hoping to get him and Peter together and maybe do some fun collaborations. Oh, that would be insane. Now, are we going to be able to help out with technical Yes. Problems? A matter of fact, something really new this year is going to happen is we're going to actually have a tent set up where you can learn different skill sets. Okay. And that way, our hope is that you can go in and learn a different building technique. And we're going to have key people from the community and also from Flight Test uh, giving those instructions. Dave's going to be leading stuff on technology. Peter's going to be leading things going from uh, brain to plane. I'm going to be talking about boss of building techniques. Sweet. But also, we have Joshua Orchard talking about... Uh, Apples. No, no. Uh, fiberglass. So there's so, a lot of different stuff. Yes, and we're going to What about obstacle skills. courses? Are the flappy dudes coming? We got to bring the flappy dudes back. Yeah, they'll I'm be back. I'm not coming this year unless the flappy dudes are there. We're hoping to build out the flappy dudes even more, but also we're hoping to have a better race line and also some, uh, I think, line over on the side for like freestyle, things like that. So nice. to keep up to date on the details of Flight Fest 2016, go to flightfest.com yeah. and also check out our feeds. We'll be obviously making more videos too. All right, now let's talk about Flight Test Foam. It's good stuff. Yeah, for real. Uh, Spencer wants to know if we can expect any larger plane designs similar to the Kraken. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also wants to know if we're going to be selling all of our designs in waterproof foam board. And then David Cook wants to know if we can make a water resistant boat. Okay, and then Ted Vian Tompkins. Hi, Ted. Uh, he wants to know uh, if, if any of the water resistant foam is going to be available anywhere else other than at the store. Bigger planes? Uh, yes. Uh, one reason why we didn't go much bigger or crazier than the Kraken is because the white foam was somewhat disposable. You could fly it on a rainy day or a dewy morning, and you could kiss out your build project goodbye. Yeah. And we didn't want to really make projects that people would put so much time in and then come back around when they painted it or had too much water on it, it would destroy it. But we don't have that problem with the water waterproof foam. No, we're going to be pushing the limits. As a matter of fact, we're going to be doing things like water planes. Yeah. And we're going to come out with some crazier, more complicated builds like the Sea Duck over there that may take you a little bit more than a few hours, but it's going to last you a lot longer. What about boats? Boats. People Back, are always asking about boats. Huge shout out to Ben Preston. Uh, ben actually <laughs> texted me through a message on Facebook yeah. and showed me video footage of his boat he's already made out of water yeah, resistant really foam. Cool. The thing was fast. Yeah. So we're really excited about that because this water resistant foam can now go into schools, can go into different areas, but hopefully it can go into your local hobby stores and craft suppliers. One thing I strongly encourage you guys is contact us through our support line, support at flighttest.com. And if you guys have any connections where we can get this into local hobby stores, we don't want to make people have to buy a case at a time from yeah. us. Now, as far as our original designs available on our website, mm -hmm. everything from here on out is going to be made with the water-resistant foam board. Yes. And, uh, with the option for like night flyers or something like that, if you want to do the original white foam board as well. Yeah. Yeah. So say something like we're working on a larger uh, arrow, yeah. the, the bigger one. That would be a really good night flyer here. So we'll probably offer both and see what people like more. And of course, if you ever want to build something where you do want to light it up, you can always scratch build that too. Yeah. And so for everything, all the current designs that we have from, you know, on back into the yeah. past, uh, we're going to be working to supply those in water resistant foam as well. Yep. We're going to slowly be working backwards and we're going to be putting out Facebook posts saying, what do you want to see next? So, so far we've done six different designs. Uh, hopefully every week we'll be adding one or two more as we get up closer and by Flight Fest, they're all going to be water resistant. And a matter of fact, everything we sell at Flight Fest, because last year we had some pretty bad rain. We did. Terrible. We don't want people to lose their investment nope. or lose their memory. So we're going to offer everything in water resistant foam with maybe a couple white planes that would be night flyers. Bring on the rain. Now we have a lot of questions about full scale planes. Yes. Uh, Crash and Burn RC asks, well, he's not really asking as much as demanding. Yes. Do a full scale Fridays update. So excited for that. Lots of exclamation points. Yeah. Tom Hudson wants to know uh, if we're going to be getting into real aeroplanes. <laughs> Craig Johnson wants to know if you're going to do an episode on your peat and pole airplane. Uh, one thing a flight test we absolutely love is aviation in general. And that of scans from Joshua Finn's 
super slow rubber band powered airplanes mm -hmm. all the way up to B-17s and home builds. And one thing we want to do is something called Full Scale Fridays. And that's going to be where it's content with a different format because mm -hmm. we don't put lives in danger. We love lives more than we love airplanes. Uh, we want to show people how this is an approachable journey. And if you're passionate about model aviation, you can continue your life and go on towards full scale aviation right. and have a great experience. But before we get into that, we need a larger crew. We need yes. some help. We need a lot of help. As a matter of fact, we need help in production, video production to be right. exact. And look at Facebook because we're going to be putting a uh, call to action. We want to add a permanent fixture to our family, one or two people uh, that can help us with our video needs. So we're not going to be doing Full Scale Friday until we find the right people in the right, right. format uh, to, uh, to come along. So if you guys are passionate about aviation and videography, we're going to have a lot of things that we need to be sent, not just the resume, but also things like demo reels right. and your experience and your knowledge base. But we really want to add someone to the family and we want to find the right fit to make sure flight tests can move on. And uh, we have a lot of exciting things in the future, even beyond full scale. Could you be the next member of flight test? Yes, you could. Lewin Barringer, I think I got that right. Will any of you come and jam with us at Flight Fest? This is Lewin from Sparkle Pony. Sparkle, Sparkle Pony. Pony. <laughs> On the Blue Ridge Highway, I strum my guitar. It's a really creative uh, name of a band. It's a folk band, though. Yeah, that we're yeah. going to have Family friendly. Fest. Yeah, that was the first thing I checked was Sparkle Pony. Who are they? Family friendly folk band. Uh, yeah, you know what? There are actually quite a few musicians here on staff at Flight, at yeah, Flight Test. A lot of musical talent. You never know. A, a hoot nanny might just go down. Bring your guitars. Um, Adam and Wright your wants to know, uh, which one of the flight test planes would you guys consider the best trainer slash first plane to try? What's your favorite? We actually have a few. Uh, my favorite is probably the Explorer. Like the Explorer? Yeah. It, as a three channel option, that would be a great, uh, nice and stable design uh, for a beginner. Uh, the Tiny Trainer obviously mm -hmm. is great. I mean, it's in the name, Trainer. Yeah. Um, and the Storch. If you have a small backyard, Tiny Trainer. Bigger backyard, Storch or the Explorer is a great choice. Kunal Tanwani. Uh, he said that he's been in the hobby for about a year, mm -hmm. but he can't overcome the hesitation, the nervousness that comes uh, with flying a scratch build. Uh, how can he learn to fly confidently? We throw you under the bus all the time. <laughs> no. First of all, to know that they're scratch builds. You build them once, you can build them again. Um, and the, the planes that we mentioned earlier are great ones to start out with. Uh, me personally, I don't like to fly where there's a lot of other people flying. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit too intimidating. But either way, um, you know, starting off with a really good aircraft uh, that's good for trainers, mm -hmm. getting into a nice open area where you got plenty of space, take it up a few mistakes high, and just take your time. Yeah. And when in doubt, throttle out. A lot of people really try to fight things all the way to the ground. And also they fall in love with their airplane before they ever fly it. Take it up, crash it, do it again and again. If you get it one second longer, that's a victory. Yep. And don't forget that. Oh, here's another name. Al Albin Saldi. I picked, I picked out the names. Can you tell? Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks Hi, for Alvin. setting me up for success. Uh, he wants to know, uh, will you guys continue to do airplane reviews? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we have a history of with our airplane reviews is that we like everything. Everything. So it's really hard to be if like... If it's in the air more than five seconds, we're celebrating it. Yeah, for real. So we might be trying to do something a little bit different. Yeah, a matter of fact, we've been trying to do something a little bit different. Um, anyone can say that they like it, and anyone can say that they don't like it, and even give reasons why. Uh, we want to try to take a different approach, and in case you guys don't know, we don't do reviews for money. We don't take sponsorship money to talk about how good we like an airplane. We left that when we left Hobby King years right. ago. Uh, we really want to be true to our thoughts, but pointing out a problem doesn't do anything. It's like a doctor telling you you're sick and not giving you the cure. Mm, that's well, deep. Thank you. One thing we want to do, though, is with transmitters, with planes, we want to give people knowledge. Mm. So if there's a bad thing about a plane, we want to show you how to overcome it. If it's right. peeling paint, we want to show you techniques for painting. Uh, if it's a transmitter, one thing we just recently did with our Grapner line is rather than talking about how much we like the MZ-12, we actually bought a representative from Grapner in right. to talk about how to use an MZ-12. Because who knows most about it? Exactly. And, and that way people can use it as a resource. So what I'm thinking more instead of reviews, I'm thinking resources. Yeah, we like everything. If it controls the plane, we like it. If it flies, we like it. Right. And if we don't like it, you're not going to see it on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Steerer, uh, he asked, how can I start a club at my school? Now, Peter, I'm going to guess that you are a student. Uh, two things you can do. You can obviously go to your teacher, show them ftstem.com, and let them go ahead. There's a whole thing that they can download that have all the requirements to meet the K-12 through curriculum requirements put out by the state. Mm -hmm. But also, if you want to do an after-school group, we have something called FT Groups. And that's where you can get your buddies together 
you can form a social group, not to interact like on Facebook through a cyber world, but network together in a physical world. So you guys can get together, build together, show your videos off, and actually encourage other people to get into it. But also you can put out posts through ftgroups.com like, hey, we're flying or we're building at this person's house tonight. We're gonna do this activity. We really want people to use planes to build relationships and we wanna give them all the tools mm -hmm. with Flight Test Has to be able to do so. So it's not just talking through the internet, right. it's actually getting together, building planes, making memories. Yeah, and FT STEM is more school related. Yeah. Uh, it's a K through 12 curriculum that can be used by teachers or educators, um, but within that is also uh, modules, which are student led. Yep, and the modules are still being developed. They're gonna come out very soon, but currently the K through 12 curriculum is out and it meets all national standards. So fall season's coming. Teachers, by all means, please check it out. Register, we have customer support people ready. We really wanna see this kick off hard in the fall. We wanna make aviation a part of everyone's school experience. Michael wants to know, what is your favorite development in the RC hobby over the past 10 years? There's been a lot of developments and yeah. a lot of cool stuff like FPV has come a long way and that's one of my favorite parts of the hobby. Yeah, uh, a but, lot of technology advances. Yeah, for sure. But I would have to say that one of my favorite developments has been the community. Amen. It's Amen. been it's been insane to watch people just come together, help each other out, fly together, learn together. It's it's been awesome. Yeah, it, never thought that we'd be blessed with an opportunity to interact with so many people in a social environment where really the planes are number two. Yeah. It's getting to interact with people is the first experience of planes right. are the tool. I know it doesn't sound like that, but if you go to Flight Fest you'll experience it firsthand. It's an amazing experience where friends can build relationships while crashing into foam. Uh, that is something that's never been like that. When yeah. I was a young kid, my, my closest friend was 20 plus years older than me because this hobby didn't exist for children. None of that exists anymore. No. And it's because of technology, really. For uh, sure. It's cheaper, it's easier. What's in our cell phones is now giving people the ability to have small cameras, small sensors that can become these amazingly powerful components to give people a good experience in flight. Yep. Now, Ramon says, uh, have you ever imagined that Flight Test would grow into such a big community and have so much success? And Aaron also says that you're both the reason I'm currently enjoying a childhood dream of mine. <laughs> How does that make you feel? And then he put in a wink face. Nice. The wink face makes me feel warm. It does. I feel like we just got a, a cyber hug from uh, Aaron. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you. This is a yeah. blessing in every meaning of the word. It's, uh, we never dreamed we'd be able to do this, right? Yeah, for sure. If you guys think that this is helping you live out a childhood dream, this is living out a dream of ours. Like just to yeah. be able to see, like we said, the community come together like this and really be able to, to thrive is really yeah. awesome. And we're looking forward to many years to come too. The community is only getting larger, but the culture is staying the same and uh, it's only, only growing. Yeah. It's growing now into schools, into outreach, into uh, different communities. And our hope is that as this grows, uh, that it will turn from a hobby to a movement. Right. So thank you. Yep, thank you guys. So we had about 80 plus comments yeah. uh, through this one feed that was put out last night. Right. So we didn't get a chance to read them all. Yeah, but anytime that you guys wanted to send us a suggestion, an idea, anything like that, you can do so through Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, through Twitter, uh, even through Periscope. Periscope, we read them all. Facebook Live. Yep. All of it. Our support channel. Don't hesitate to give us your feedback. We do right. read it. We take it personally. It was, it's what drives us. Yeah, for sure. So uh, keep it coming. Check out the different social medias. We're going to be leaking a lot of stuff coming out in the future and also asking for your feedback right when we're doing it. Right. So uh, stay active. All right. Thanks, you guys, for watching. See you next time. Thanks.